15. Jeffrey Mindock Amid a troubling rise in anti-Semitism throughout the U.S. in late 2023, an Arizona resident named Jeffrey Mindock was accused of threatening to murder a Scottsdale rabbi and other Jewish civilians. The 50-year-old suspect conveyed the threats in an email, ordering the rabbi to ask a Utah judge to drop state-level charges in court. In his own words, Mindock allegedly wrote, If you do not use your influence to right this wrong, I will execute you and every other Jew I can find tonight at midnight. The sender ordered the rabbi to conduct any further interactions face-to-face -face at an address specified in the email, which was signed Shalom Victor Sitkevics. Investigators traced the address in the email to Mindong's home in Tempe. He was promptly arrested and now faces charges in federal court. Mindok has a history of threatening behavior dating back to 2021, when he allegedly threatened to execute people during a court appearance over allegations of stalking. He's also accused of threatening to hang the judge who oversaw the case. The stalking allegations against the suspect came after the victim received two harassing emails. After ignoring the first email, the victim received a second message threatening to kill his entire family if he failed to comply with the sender's demands, which included declining to testify in yet another case that was ongoing in Tempe City Court at the time. Mindok also noted that it would be easy to harm the victim in the courtroom using a pen as a weapon. In another email to an attorney Mindok believed was representing the victim, he threatened to kill the victim if he testified. He also wrote that he knows how to build bombs and that he had enough explosives to kill an entire SWAT team. According to court documents, Mindong denied sending the emails and claimed to be the true victim when questioned by police during the investigation. In April 2022, the victim received a third email containing his address, which Mindok allegedly paid a private investigator to track down. Fearing for his family's safety, the victim felt he had no other choice but to break his lease and move. Mindok reached a plea agreement in the case, which sentenced him to 10 years of probation. It's unclear whether his probation has been revoked in light of his more recent arrests. 14. Kenneth Jones A senior United Airlines pilot named Kenneth Jones snapped in August 2023 when he got stuck in line at a parking lot exit gate at Denver International Airport in Colorado. The 63-year-old exited his vehicle with an axe and swung at the gate's arm until it fell off, striking it nearly two dozen times as shocked witnesses looked on. Two airport employees intervened and wrestled the axe away from Jones, who fled the scene and was arrested in a nearby field next to a runway. After being taken into custody on suspicion of criminal mischief, Jones reportedly told law enforcement that he just hit his breaking point. By destroying the exit, he was trying to get rid of issues for everyone. Airport officials told CBS News that delays at the lots gates are common due to many people lacking the proper parking permit. Jones decided to take matters into his own hands when he noticed six cars in line at each of the three gates and became too impatient to wait. Following the arrest, he was suspended from his job pending the outcome of his criminal case and an internal investigation. About a month after the incident, Jones agreed to a 12-month diversion program, which requires him to avoid any further legal trouble while undergoing a behavioral assessment, performing community service, paying restitution, getting approval before leaving the state, and submitting to random drug testing. It's unclear whether he still works for United Airlines. 13. Marcus Adepoju 31-year-old British music producer Marcus Adepoju, aka Menace to Society, lived up to his stage name in April 2023 when he shot a man through a window on a busy London street over a drug debt of less than $5. Adepoju fired three bullets at the home, narrowly missing his target and showering the victim in shards of glass. He was connected to the crime through surveillance footage, which showed him approaching the residence from a house nearby, which he returned to after the shooting. After identifying Adepoju as the prime suspect in the case, police followed him to a storage unit, where they found a cache of guns, ammunition, knives, drugs, and cash. A search of a second storage unit connected to Adepoju turned up more ammunition, drugs, and money. One of the guns was directly linked to the shooting, and Adepoju's DNA was found on the weapon. 
In February 2024, the defendant was found guilty of attempted murder, possession of a firearm and ammunition with intent to endanger life, and possession of drugs with the intent to supply. 12. David Jewell After serving five years in a Delaware state prison for stalking a previous partner, 41-year-old David Jewell beat his pregnant girlfriend during a heated argument that broke out while he was driving her home from work in September 2017. According to authorities, Jewell pulled the victim's hair, punched her in the stomach with a closed fist, and repeatedly slammed her head against the window of the vehicle while on probation for his previous crime. In May 2018, Jewell pleaded guilty to second-degree assault and violating probation. He was sentenced to nine years in prison. Described by law enforcement as a serial stalker, Jewell has a decades-long history of violence against women dating back to 2001, including several domestic violence-related felony convictions and dozens of probation violations. His previous victims include at least five intimate partners and family members. And he didn't let prison stop him from continuing to torment his targets, as evidenced by the hundreds of violent phone calls, messages, and letters he sent to two victims from behind bars in violation of a no-contact order of protection. When the State Department of Corrections blocked Jewel from calling the victims, he continued to do so using other inmates' ID numbers and by mailing violent letters. In September 2023, a Delaware court realized that Jewel is never going to stop stalking and made the wise decision to put him away for life. The sentence came in response to a multitude of new convictions for Jewel's latest batch of crimes, including felony stalking, harassment, and 24 counts of terroristic threatening. Following the ruling, Attorney General Kathy Jennings described Jewel's actions as completely unconscionable and threatening to the entire community. She said that she hoped his victims found some peace in knowing that he'll never step outside prison walls again. 11. Daniel Bursick Over a 20-year period starting in 1996, Wisconsin resident Daniel Bursick faced 81 criminal charges in 48 separate cases, mostly involving theft. As of 2016, the then 39-year-old had 38 convictions on his record. Local station Fog 6 first exposed Bursick in 2008 as the operator of a crooked moving company. According to the news outlet, the business made money by hiding customers' property and charged exorbitant fees in exchange for its return, earning Bursick the nickname of the Moving Menace. After the story broke, Bursick went on a cocaine-fueled crime spree and committed a series of car break-ins before fleeing the state. He was picked up in Arizona and extradited to Wisconsin, where he served a few years of prison time and then opened a tattoo parlor. In 2012, Bursick thanked Fox 6 for helping to put him behind bars, where he got sober and began taking steps to turn his life around, or so he claimed. Later that year, the station discovered that he was still operating a shady moving business. A customer named Crystal Wilborn said that the company, Incredible Movers, had offered to move her belongings to a storage unit in one day and with one truck. On the day of the move, an extremely small truck showed up at the house. The crew moved Crystal's things in multiple trips over a several-day period, then hit her with a bill for over $5,500, much higher than the estimate she'd been given when she agreed to hire the company. A job that had taken a different moving company just 10 hours from start to finish during Crystal's previous move had somehow taken the incredible movers team nearly 40 hours to complete. Bursick allegedly threatened to sell Crystal's stuff when she refused to pay the bill. She finally got her things back after going to the police, who helped negotiate a lower price, but she and her boyfriend were so disgusted by the situation that they contacted the news. Just months after praising Fox 6 for helping him get his life on track, Bursick refused to speak with reporters and blamed Crystal for the excessive cost of her move, claiming she'd packed poorly and was unprepared. In 2014, Bursick allegedly got into a physical altercation with a loss prevention manager at a Menard store while attempting to steal merchandise. That same year, 
authorities accused him of stealing a $20,000 RV from a businessman named Randy Schwartz. After working hard for years, Schwartz had bought his dream camper and named it Eleanor. When it came time for a new trailer, he placed Eleanor for sale outside his business in Franklin. Surveillance footage showed the thieves flawlessly backing up the camper, hitching it to a van, and driving it away in less than two minutes. By the time police found Eleanor in Berzig's possession six months later, he had modified it into what could more or less be described as a piece of junk. Much to the frustration of Schwartz and Berzig's other victims, five out of six felony charges were dropped as part of a controversial plea agreement in early 2016. Bursig pleaded guilty to one count of retail theft and was sentenced to the maximum of 18 months in prison time. By that point in time, he'd never served more than two years in prison for any of his previous cases, causing the community to grow increasingly frustrated as he continued to get away with many of his crimes. In 2021, Bursig was arrested on felony drug charges. Records show that he was discharged from custody later that year, and his current whereabouts and activities are unknown. 10. Terry McMillian Jr. 82-year-old Gary Razor probably never imagined that he'd be attacked during his shift at a Home Depot store in Hillsborough, North Carolina, but that's unfortunately what happened in October 2022. The octogenarian spotted a man trying to sneak out of the store with a cart filled with three pressure washers valued at $800 and confronted the suspected thief. Surveillance footage showed the suspect shoving Razor to the ground and continuing out the door, causing multiple broken bones. The victim passed away in hospice care several weeks later from complications related to his injuries, and the medical examiner ruled his death a homicide. Razor's wife, Yvonne, later told CBS 17 that her husband intervened after recognizing the suspect as a repeat shoplifter who'd stolen from the store in the past. Speaking with Nightline, Razor's son Jeff said that his father had only planned to ask the suspect for a receipt showing his purchase. With brazen retail theft on the rise in recent years, Jeff Razor called on lawmakers to impose harsher consequences for these types of crimes in an effort to deter thieves. In January 2023, authorities charged 26-year-old Terry McMillian Jr. with first-degree murder and robbery. He remains held without bond at the Orange County Jail as he awaits the outcome of his case. 9. Kevin Garner between 1986 and 2010, New Mexico resident Kevin Garner was arrested 128 times. His record included convictions for serious crimes including aggravated burglary, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and drug trafficking. Despite this, the most time he spent in prison for a single case was four and a half years of a two-decade sentence for aggravated assault of a peace officer, being a felon in possession of a firearm and shooting from or at a motor vehicle. Garner's 128th arrest came in December 2010, when he was taken into custody during a visit to his probation officer in Albuquerque for methamphetamine trafficking. By that point in time, local law enforcement had become fed up with seeing him get off easy time and again for his crimes. Much to the relief of state authorities, federal prosecutors agreed to take on the case as part of an initiative targeting the worst of the worst state-level offenders. Garner was a perfect candidate for the effort, which sought to put away repeat criminals away for as long as possible. In 2011, he pleaded guilty to one federal count of methamphetamine distribution and was sentenced to 10 years in prison, followed by five years of supervised release. In the federal system, there's no parole and strict limits on how much good time an inmate can earn, which meant that Garner would serve the vast majority of his time behind bars. The outcome of the case came as a relief to local law enforcement officials, who could rest easy knowing that the habitual offender would be off the streets for the better part of a decade and under strict supervision for years afterwards. 8. Jamie and Karen Longnecker Ohio resident Jamie Longnecker's history of stalking, menacing, and violating protective orders dates back to the year 2000. In 2011, he served a three-year prison sentence for similar crimes. 
He caught his biggest case yet in early 2021, when the 46-year-old and his 75-year-old mother, Karen, were charged in a 103-count indictment, accusing them of serial stalking. The victims listed in the indictment included 30 individuals, as well as a charity and members of law enforcement who were tasked with investigating the allegations against them. The indictment accused Jamie of developing obsessions with dozens of women and relentlessly harassing them over a five-year period. Numerous victims received explicit photos and other unwanted material in the mail after he tracked their addresses using computer equipment purchased by his mother. Jamie's neighbor accused him of snapping photos of her and tracking her work schedule. Another young woman's life was turned upside down when she didn't want to be Jamie's friend, and he refused to take no for an answer. Following Jamie's arrest, Mahoning County Sheriff Jerry Green told local station WFMJ that he appears to target his victims at random, which means that almost any woman could be at risk of falling into his path of obsession. In 2023, Karen Longnecker pleaded no contest to a misdemeanor charge of obstructing official business. She was sentenced to probation, despite being described by the judge as a big factor in her son's crimes. Jamie pleaded no contest to just two counts of felony menacing by stalking in exchange for getting the rest of the charges dropped. He received the maximum sentence of three years in prison and will spend the rest of his life as a registered predator but it likely brought little comfort to his victims, some of whom endured his stalking for upwards of a decade. In fact, the sentence probably seemed trivial to the victim who became terrified to retrieve her mail because she dreaded the next piece of correspondence from Longnecker. Or another woman who received a copy of her grandmother's obituary covered in swastikas and became so scared for her safety that she felt obligated to buy a gun. The judge overseeing the case admitted that he did not believe Jamie Longnecker would stop stalking his victims. He said that he would impose a longer prison sentence if he could, but that he was limited by the maximum punishment outlined under the law. 7. Anthony Sand Some career criminals slow down as they get old, but Anthony Ricardo Sand is not one of them. Also known by the last name Romanov, the prolific serial thief was 33 years old when he carried out his first major heist in 1984. In what went down in New Zealand history as the largest amount of money ever stolen in an armed robbery at the time, Sand and several accomplices stole nearly $300,000 in cash from a supermarket in the North Shore region of Auckland. Sand served prison time for a second armed robbery in 1993. Five years later, he rode into the Auckland Art Gallery on a motorcycle while wielding a pair of guns and proceeded to steal a famous painting. He served 16 years in prison for the art heist and was freed in 2012, only to steal a rare motorcycle a year later while still under post-release supervision. Accompanied by a co-conspirator, San did his research ahead of time before going to a rural property where a $130,000 Ducati bike was being kept in a shed. The thieves accessed the fenced yard in the middle of the night by damaging a metal security gate. They stealthily wheeled the Ducati and another bike off the property, along with thousands of dollars worth of gear and equipment, only to discover that one of the motorcycles had a dead battery. Sand and his accomplice ditched the inoperable bike and rode off on the Ducati. According to prosecutors, Sand meticulously planned out the heist starting with a search to identify the 10 people in New Zealand who owned the ultra-rare model. After choosing which owner would be the easiest to steal from, Sand carefully analyzed their property on Google Maps and made a step-by-step -step plan for how he would get his hands on the bike without being noticed. He also wrote a detailed list of the ways he planned to alter the Ducati's appearance once it was in his possession. But all that planning meant nothing when San made the rookie mistake of leaving his balaclava at the crime scene. He was identified as a match to DNA on the garment and was arrested for the theft, even though the bike itself was never recovered. The bike's owner never received an insurance payout for the stolen motorcycle, and his family was left so shaken by the crime that they felt forced to move in order to feel safe again. 
After being convicted of burglary and successfully winning a new trial, San was convicted of the charge for a second time in May 2017. While handing down a seven-year sentence, the judge admonished the 65-year-old for his lengthy criminal record, which by then included seven burglary counts and one aggravated burglary conviction. He noted how San showed a complete disregard for both his victims and his probation rules, including the court-imposed curfew he violated when he stole the Ducati. Between the defendant's blatant lack of remorse and the lack of any signs that he intended to stop committing crimes, the judge ruled that San would have to spend at least half his sentence in prison before becoming eligible for parole. 6. Tracy Mercer Dubbed a career criminal by Polk County, Florida Sheriff Grady Judd, 50-year-old Avon Park resident Tracy Mercer has been arrested for at least 53 felonies and 24 misdemeanors throughout his adult life. Past charges against him include assault, burglary, battery on a law enforcement officer, car theft, kidnapping, and resisting an officer with violence. Mercer added to the list in November 2021 when he allegedly led police on a chase in a stolen pickup truck in Lakeland. He was initially asleep behind the wheel, but woke up and pedaled to the metal when he saw the cops approaching. According to law enforcement, the suspect barreled through several chain-link fences before striking two vehicles with pieces of fence that were dragging behind the truck. Deputies successfully deflated one of the vehicle's tires using stop sticks, but Mercer continued driving and struck a third vehicle. The pursuit finally ended when a deputy successfully executed a pit maneuver, forcing the stolen trunk to spin out and come to a stop. Mercer was allegedly smoking methamphetamine and still had his foot on the gas pedal when approached by deputies. A search of the vehicle turned up a shotgun, ammunition, over 31 grams of methamphetamine, and drug paraphernalia. The habitual offender was booked into the Polk County Jail on charges of grand theft auto, leaving the scene of a crash, driving under the influence, fleeing to elude, possession of a firearm and ammunition by a convicted felon, and armed trafficking in methamphetamine. 5. Ray Shelter Jr. Being involved in a crime against a police officer is a pretty much guaranteed way to become a pariah in one's community. Pennsylvania resident Ray Shelter Jr. learned this lesson the hard way in November 2015, when he was accused of fatally shooting a St. Clair officer who was responding to a domestic violence call at his home. To the surprise and outrage of many, Shetler was acquitted by a jury after arguing that he shot back in self-defense after 54-year-old officer Lloyd Reed fired the first shot through his window. He claimed that he didn't know the person shooting at him was a cop, and five witnesses took the stand to support his narrative of innocence. After losing the murder case, prosecutors chose to move forward with a theft charge against Shedler for attempting to flee from the police in a stolen vehicle following Reed's death. He was found guilty in 2018 and sentenced to probation. This hardly marked the end of Shedler's run-ins with the law, and he wouldn't be so lucky the next time when he tried to persuade a jury in his favor. In December 2021, he was accused of assaulting a deputy sheriff as police attempted to apprehend him on an outstanding bench warrant for failing to appear in court for a probation violation. The confrontation occurred as police stormed a mobile home in New Florence, where Shelter was hiding out from law enforcement. Deputy Sheriff Irvin Shipley suffered a concussion, a torn rotator cuff, and other injuries that prosecutors accused Shelter of causing. Shedler was permanently blinded in one eye during the encounter. He argued at trial that the police brutally beat him as retribution for his acquittal in Reed's death. More specifically, Shedler accused the officers of repeatedly hitting him in the head with a flashlight and deploying a taser at his head while yelling that it was payback for the fallen officer. The 39-year-old was nevertheless found guilty of aggravated assault, attempted disarming of a law enforcement official and resisting arrest. Prosecutors urged the judge to impose the maximum 19-year sentence, describing Shetler as a violent and unsupervisable menace to society who's incapable of complying with norms. In early 2024, the judge sentenced the defendant to one to two years in prison, followed by two years of probation with credit for time served, which means that he was already eligible for parole. 
Records show that Shadler's not currently in state custody, indicating that he's been released from custody. 4. Jeremy Montrell Robertson Jr. Louisiana resident Jeremy Montrell Robertson Jr. has a lengthy history of criminal allegations involving gun violence. He was the prime suspect in the 2009 shooting death of Louis Deggs Jr. in Baton Rouge, but a grand jury had declined to indict him following his 2010 arrest in connection with the case. The following year, Robertson was accused of firing multiple shots at a victim who survived with injuries, but the charges failed to stick and the case was eventually dropped. In 2012, Robertson was sentenced to three years in federal prison for a gun charge. He was still on probation in 2015 when he was charged in connection with five murders in Baton Rouge, including one killing dating back to five years earlier. Robertson was accused of fatally shooting a man named George Dyson in 2010. Kerry Green was killed in July 2015, and Antoine Harris, Kevin Ford, and Frederick Corner were shot dead in someone's driveway the following month. In 2016, police arrested Robertson on suspicion of three counts of first-degree murder and two counts of second-degree murder. He was also charged with the non-fatal shooting of a man who survived his injuries after taking a bullet to the chest in late 2015. According to authorities, the victim had tried intervening in a fight between Robertson's brother and another man and was shot as part of the suspect's efforts to ensure a fair fight. Robertson was convicted of the non-fatal shooting in 2017 and was sentenced to 12 years in prison. At the time, he had not been formally charged with any of the five murders he was suspected of committing, and the cases appear to remain officially unsolved. It's unclear whether Robertson remained a suspect in the slayings. 3. Grant Hodnett when British serial stalker and former professional cricket player Grant Hodnett discovered that his ex-girlfriend was moonlighting as an adult model in 2020, he sent the woman's X-rated images to her friends, family, employer, and customers. In a message to the victim's father, he attached 20 explicit photos and wrote that the woman was at risk and needed help. Hodnett also sent slanderous messages, describing his ex as a liar and a psychopath. His behavior eventually escalated to the point where the victim's mental health suffered severely, causing her to believe that Hodnett's goal was to trigger a complete emotional breakdown. She began to worry constantly about what would come next, as Hodnett consistently found new ways to try ruining her life. Hodnett was eventually arrested for stalking, involving serious alarm or distress. He pleaded guilty to the charge and narrowly avoided prison thanks to his lack of prior convictions and the overwhelming number of letters the court received in support of his good character. While handing down a two-year community order, the judge reminded Hodnett that he'd come perilously close to being incarcerated and that if he got into any more trouble while under supervision, he would go to prison. In addition to being ordered to stay away from the victim indefinitely, he was required to undergo 20 days of rehabilitation, take a Building Better Relationships course, and perform community service. Hodnett apparently failed to heed the judge's warning about future offenses, however, and in 2023, the 41-year-old was accused of stalking another woman after she ended their three-month relationship. The victim received a barrage of emails, phone calls, and text messages from therapists, charities, and companies who'd received her contact information and thought she was interested in their services. She also began receiving phone calls from blocked numbers which were eventually traced to Hodnett. A few months later, Hodnett's original victim spotted him in an area where he was banned from entering via an order of protection issued by the court. He was arrested twice for his actions against both women and allegedly tried to hide evidence on his phone, tablet, and laptop from law enforcement. In February 2024, Hodnett pleaded guilty to one count of violating a restraining order and a second stalking charge. He was sentenced to 18 months in prison and banned indefinitely from contacting the victims, posting about them online, or going anywhere near them. 2. Kiel Marchand 37-year-old serial thief Kiel Marchand had a lengthy criminal record spanning four states and dating back to his teen years. 
In 2011, he allegedly led police on a foot chase after stealing hundreds of dollars worth of designer cologne from a Macy's store in North Attleboro, Massachusetts. In 2017, Marchand was arrested for stealing baby formula from a CVS store in Seacog, Massachusetts and fleeing from the police. During that same year, he was charged in connection with a nighttime burglary, a vehicle theft, and at least one other shoplifting incident. Marchand's most recent arrest came in early 2024, when he was accused of threatening a Home Depot employee with a box cutter while attempting to steal $1,800 worth of merchandise in Attleboro, Massachusetts. Police captured him following a 10-minute foot pursuit that ended near his mother's home. Through his lawyer, Marchand admitted to stealing certain items but denied threatening an employee at knife point. At the time of his arrest, he had stopped going to his probation appointments and was wanted on warrants for forgery, larceny, and shoplifting. He now stands accused of larceny, armed robbery, carrying a dangerous weapon, being disorderly, resisting arrest, and disturbing the peace. Marchand pleaded not guilty and is maintaining his innocence from behind bars after being labeled a danger to the community and ordered held without bond. And now for number one. But if you want to hear more bizarre and crazy stories, stay tuned after the video for some more content. 1. Bill Jean Hobbs Over a month-long period starting in September 2022, 14 women complained to police about being inappropriately groped by the same stranger in San Francisco. According to police, the suspect approached his victims and immediately made unwanted advances before running away. Based on the evidence and the suspect's pattern of behavior, investigators believe there may be more victims and that the gropings may have been going on longer than they could prove. They identified the culprit as 34-year-old Bill Jean Hobbs and arrested him on suspicion of false imprisonment, nine battery counts, and four counts of public nuisance. Nine of the charges were eventually dropped, but the judge ordered the case to go to trial on the remaining counts. One of Hobbs' accusers said that he wrapped her in a bear hug from behind while she was walking her dog and carried her 15 feet before putting her down. Another woman accused Hobbs of trying to grab her arm and waist while she was jogging and chasing her as she ran away. At least one victim described Hobbs as a creep, while another said that he had a look of pure evil on his face when he accosted her. The defendant's attorney, Max Breaker, argued that Hobbs did not act with intent due to mental illness. Speaking with the San Francisco Standard, Hobbs' mother said that her son just needs better pickup lines and called the charges against him ridiculous. But Hobbs has had other run-ins with law enforcement, including a 2012 arrest for stealing a car. He also has a history of risky behavior and is known for hanging out in areas that are known for heavy drug use. In a previous case stemming from an incident that occurred in 2021, he was accused of grabbing a teenager in public but was found unable to defend himself in court. He didn't receive any mental health treatment throughout months of court proceedings due to a shortage of beds, and the case was eventually dropped. Hobbs himself doesn't seem to think he's mentally ill. In court, he claimed that his actions were the result of a social problem and that he was trying to connect with people by tapping and hugging them. Either way, as his more recent cases prove, it wasn't long before Hobbs resumed his pattern of harassing random women. In May 2023, a jury found Hobbs guilty on eight charges, including battery, assault, and one felony count of false imprisonment. He expressed a disturbing lack of remorse, even going as far as to interrupt a woman during her victim impact statement by saying, wow, get over yourself. The judge sentenced Hobbs to nearly six years in prison, which means that women living in San Francisco can rest easy knowing that they won't cross paths with him any time in the near future. Number 10. Home Invasion Gone Wrong Samantha Allison Weiner, an 18-year-old woman from Ponta Verde Beach in Florida, was arrested and charged with second-degree murder in connection to a burglary gone wrong. It happened on September 21, 2020. Officers were called just after 1 o'clock in the morning to a burglary in progress and shots fired at a home near Beach Boulevard. When police arrived on the scene, they found Ezekiel Trey Archaluda dead in the front yard of the property. Somebody had shot the young man to death. But here's where things get really twisted and confusing. 
The man who was killed was not the victim of the home robbery, but rather the robber himself. It was the guy living in the house that shot him dead. Samantha was the orchestrator behind everything. Her ex-boyfriend was the one living in the house, and she wanted revenge on him. Samantha had asked multiple people to rob Roman Gerald Stewart Jr. in retaliation for him dumping her. After a lot of asking around, Ezekiel was the one who finally agreed to do the deed. But what he didn't realize was that when he moved in to rob Roman's house, Roman was locked and loaded. Roman killed Ezekiel before he could even get inside. And even though Roman got away with it on Florida's Stand Your Ground law, Samantha did not. She may not have physically been at the scene that night, but the fact that she organized the whole thing makes her just as culpable in the eyes of the law. Number 9. Stealing from the Autistic This one is really cringeworthy. A woman from New Orleans has been given 20 years in prison for pretending to be a lawyer in order to loot the trust fund of an autistic man. Her name is Christina Galjur, and she pleaded guilty in 2021 to the theft of over $25,000. She also pleaded guilty to three counts of practicing law with no license. And as if robbing an autistic person wasn't terrible enough, she had five other victims as well, with whom she had collected at least $14,500 from. And she did all of this while pretending to be a lawyer. She used the money she stole from these people to fund exotic vacations and luxury goods for herself. In 2015, the autistic man's parents tragically died. They left him a multi-million dollar trust fund and a home in New Orleans on Nashville Avenue. It was a terrible loss for the man, and he surely would have traded all that money just to see his parents again. But Christina didn't care about his money or his feelings. In 2016, she introduced herself as a lawyer to the victim. She gained his trust, then convinced him to hand over power of attorney over all his assets. Then slowly but surely, she started draining him like a vampire. She purchased a new Jaguar, hosted fancy parties, went on shopping sprees, all while the unwitting victim was still grieving his parents. In 2017, she convinced the victim to hand over his house. She told him the only way he could avoid losing it was if he gave it over to her. This would be the big push that eventually had the victim go to the police, who arrested Christina in December 2019. She had three good years of robbing this poor man, and now she'll spend the next 20 locked behind bars. Number 8. Kidnapping the Wife Two people were left dead after a millionaire hired some men to kidnap his wife. It was something straight out of an episode of Fargo. This happened in the town of Lafayette, southern Louisiana. The year was 2017, and in early August, Sylvester Bracey and Arsenio Haynes prepared to do some kidnapping. The two men dressed themselves up as workers from an appliance store armed themselves with semi-automatic handguns and forced their way into Shonda Handley's home. They put a bag over her head and threw her in the back of a van. But things had gone wrong right from the beginning. A neighbor and her daughter happened to be visiting Shonda when the kidnappers showed up. They handcuffed these people and left them in the house. Already, they were off to a rough start. Then, an off-duty deputy saw the van driving on the shoulder of the road to skirt around traffic. The officer alerted his colleagues and the kidnapping was foiled. There was a high-speed pursuit. The police chased the van until it eventually hit a dead end. The kidnappers then abandoned the vehicle and left Shanda trapped in the back. When they tried to elude the police by swimming through a canal, they drowned. In the end, it all came back to Lawrence Handley. He had cooked up the whole scheme so that he could swoop in at the end and save his wife from the two bad guys, thereby winning her affection back. The two were married, but not exactly together, and this was his secret plan to get her back in his arms. Sadly for the two men he hired, they both wound up dead in a canal. His wife now hates him more than ever. Plus, Lawrence is looking at 15 years in prison for hiring kidnappers. Number 7. Lawnmower DUI In summer 2020, a man from Greenwood, Delaware was arrested on his fifth DUI. But there was something a little unusual about his arrest. You see, police responded to calls at around 4 o'clock in the afternoon of the subject acting disorderly in the grassy area on the side of the farm road. As it turned out, Ralph Cahall was absolutely wasted. Ralph had drunk himself into a stupor, climbed onto his lawnmower, and went for a drive. 
Since he already had four DUIs and didn't feel like getting another one, he thought he could get away with it by driving a lawnmower instead of a car. But that's not really how it works. Even if it is a lawnmower, it's still considered a motor vehicle. It's not like Ralph couldn't have had a few beers and drove his lawnmower on his own property. But the fact that he was going through yards, acting belligerent, and annoying the neighbors, well, that had him hauled off to jail for his fifth DOI offense. He was also charged with resisting arrest, disorderly conduct, and criminal trespassing because he drove through people's lawns. Number 6. Failed Truck Heist In November of 2021, an armored truck driving along a freeway in California spilled some of their cash. It happened on a Friday just before 9 o'clock in the morning. The California Highway Patrol began getting 911 calls that there was actual money scattered across a part of the Interstate 5, backing up traffic. The truck had lost a significant amount of cash, and it was all over the road. When people saw what was happening, they got out of their vehicles like a bunch of savage animals and scrounged to get as much of the cash into the pockets as they could. After all, who could just leave all that money lying on the road? But here's the thing about it. All the people who picked up the cash are now thieves. Just because it was on the road didn't mean it was fair game. It came out of an armored truck. The money still belonged to wherever the armored truck was taking it. When the cops arrived, most of the motorists did return the money they'd picked up from the ground, but several people were seen speeding away from the scene with the pockets stuffed full of $1 bills. Two people were actually arrested for theft on the spot. These two individuals had accidentally locked themselves out of their car in their mad dash to pick up money, then got caught since they couldn't drive away. What would you do if you saw an armored truck lose its cash on the highway? Would you steal as much of it as you could and drive away? Or pretend there weren't thousands of dollars blowing across the street? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe before the end of the video. Number 5. Eaten Alive A Florida burglary suspect fleeing from the police in November of 2015 was foiled by something he would have never expected. The burglar, a man of just 22 named Matthew Riggins, was suspected of burglarizing homes in Florida. He had gone on a home invasion rampage, only to find himself in hot pursuit by law enforcement officers. To try and throw the cops off his trail, Matthew waded into a lake. He was hoping that if he hung out in the lake long enough, the police would leave the area and he could get away with his loot. Now, if you live in Florida, a lake is probably the last place you want to be hiding. The burglar was attacked and partially eaten by a massive alligator as he was hiding from the cops. When his body was later discovered and an autopsy was done, it was determined that he drowned during the alligator's assault. A necropsy done to the alligator showed parts of Matthew's body in its stomach. Number 4. Accidentally murdering the murderer in the middle of a murder It was January 2022 when something both strange and tragic happened in West London. A man drove over a man and a woman but he did it with good intentions. The 26-year-old driver was trying to stop the man from stabbing the woman to death. You see, the attack was already underway. A man had a knife. He was repeatedly stabbing the woman with it in front of horrified onlookers in Chippenham Road, and there was nothing anybody could do to stop it. It was horrific. There was blood everywhere, and the bystanders were too afraid to take the knife from the deranged lunatic. But not the guy in his car. When he saw it was happening, he steered his vehicle directly into them. His plan was to run over the man with the knife, thereby saving the woman, but he accidentally ran them both over. Her coat got stuck under one of the wheels, and she went underneath the car. Yes, he ended up killing the murderer who was in the middle of committing a murder, but he also ran over the woman he was trying to protect. It came out later that the man with the knife was Leon McCasker, the ex-boyfriend of Yasmin Chikafi. By the time the car ran them both over, Yasmin had already been stabbed to death by Leon. Both died on scene in what was a horrible incident of domestic violence at its worst. As for the man behind the wheel who was just trying to help, he was branded a hero by the family of the victim and never charged with murder. Number 3. Burglary Fail A robbery went very bad in Washington back in December of 2021. Jerome Smith was home with his sister when a pair of robbers kicked in his back door just after 4 o'clock in the morning. It was a Thursday, and the rest of the neighborhood was quiet. 
Jeremy doesn't know why they picked his house, located about 45 miles from Seattle in Spanaway, and he didn't care. When he saw that one of the men was armed, he pulled out a gun and shot them both. One of the burglars was left unresponsive on the floor, while the other escaped the property with a bullet wound. The robber who escaped still hasn't been found and is considered at large. So far as the cops know, he is currently walking around with a bullet lodged in his body somewhere. The first robber, who was the one laying unresponsive on the floor, ended up dying there in the house he was trying to rob. As for Jaram, he was never charged with murder or manslaughter because he was only defending himself. He didn't go looking to shoot anybody, and he's terribly shaken up about having to kill a man. But when two strange men kicked open his door in the middle of the night, it was all he could do to protect his family. Number 2. The Craigslist Hitman A man from Colorado has been given 48 years in prison because of one dead woman, one very poor choice, and a Craigslist ad for a hitman. His name is Joseph Lopez, just 23 years old, when he pled guilty to second-degree murder. The victim was Natalie Bollinger, killed on December 29, 2017. Lopez put a single bullet straight through her head, execution style, as she knelt in front of him. According to a statement from the Adams County District Attorney's Office, he had done it in response to an ad on the single section for the hit. But here's where things get totally wacky. The ad for the hit was put there by Natalie. She had put out an assassin's contract on herself. It came out during the trial that Joseph and Natalie exchanged dozens of text messages before he drove to her apartment, picked her up, and killed her. He had even answered the ad pretending to be an experienced hired killer. After texting for just two hours, the pair met in real life. Obviously, this never should have happened. Even if Natalie had put out a hit on herself, Joseph was a real psycho for going along with it. All he even got out of the deal was to take someone's life, a free gun, and the measly contents of Natalie's purse. When an autopsy was done, it became clear that she had an almost lethal level of heroin in her system, so she was drugged and not in her right state of mind. Yet, instead of alerting the police and getting Natalie the help she deserved, Joseph allowed himself to become the Grim Reaper. Number 1. LA Hit and Run On February 20th, 2021, a homeless man in Los Angeles decided he needed to steal a truck. It was a big success and a crime he might have gotten away with. That is, if not for the fact that as he sped away, he ran over a woman with his truck. He didn't just clip this innocent bystander with a stolen truck. He drove right over her and severely injured her. It happened late at night with the homeless man stealing a 2001 Toyota Tundra. This is a big truck, not something you want plowing into you as you're walking across the street. He struck a female pedestrian who never even saw it coming. She was rushed to the hospital and later released, but she'll be traumatized and scarred for the rest of her life. Meanwhile, the thief knew he was in big trouble. He abandoned the truck before he could ever sell it or get anything out of it and ran away. When police checked the truck for DNA evidence, they were able to identify the man as Tajon Wright Freeman, a person with a history of felonies. He was already a wanted man, even before he ran over a pedestrian and then took off into the shadows. Thanks for watching. Would you rather live next to a polite hoarder whose mess can be seen and smelled from your property, or a disruptive neat freak who keeps their home clean but constantly causes disturbances in the neighborhood? Let us know in the comments below and remember to subscribe. See you soon. Bye.